Now in this last part of the question, we're asked to work out the probability that D is an outlier. And do you remember in the previous part, we found out what the outliers were, H and K. K was this value up here, which was 51.6, and H was this outlier here at 8.4. Now both of these values are the same distance above and below the 30. And so therefore, if we're to work out the probability that D is an outlier, that is that we need to work out that area and this area here, but they are both the same because of the symmetry of the problem. So all we need to do is work out the area of one of them and then just double it. Now I'm going to pick this one here. It's much easier to work with values to the right of your mean because the tables generally give us values to the right of the mean. So looking at 51.6, what I'm going to do is just project this down onto the standardized normal distribution. Look for this value of Z here, which is going to be called Z1. Let's just mark that in, Z1. We want this area here. So what is Z1? Z1 is going to be worked out in the usual way. It's the observed value minus the mean all over the standard deviation. So in other words, it's going to be the observed value 51.6 minus the mean of 30 all divided by the standard deviation, which is 8. We can work this out and if you do that, you get 2.7. If you were to work out what the Z value of 8.4 was that corresponded with this observed value 8.4 by doing 8.4 minus 30 all over 8. You can try it if you like. You'll find you'll get minus 2.7. Again, showing you that they are symmetrically placed above and below the mean. So, now that we've got our value of Z as being 2.7, we're 2.7 standard deviations above the mean. That's what that's telling us, okay? Then, if I'm to work out this, knowing that I've got my tables that give me area to the left of Z, okay? Not this one up here. What I can say is that the probability of D being greater than 51.6 is exactly the same as the probability of Z being greater than the 2.7. All right. But as I said earlier, the tables only give us area to the left here. But knowing that the whole area is one, representing all the probabilities, I can do one minus the probability that Z is less than 2.7. So that's going to be 1 minus whatever this value is. And if you look up in your tables, you'll see your tables then will just give you an extract again in the usual way. We're going to have our Z values here and the probability of Z being less than Z. Okay. Look in your tables, looking under 2.7, what you should see, it won't say 2.7 there, so it will say 2.70. You should find you get 0.9965. So that's the value that you want to pick, 1 minus 0.9965. And you work that out and you end up with 0.0035. Very small number as you'd expect because you're looking for the probability of being greater than an outlier. So very unlikely chance of that happening. Okay, so to answer the question though, we want to know the probability that D is an outlier. So there's my intro, an outlier, and we know that that's going to be twice this value, it's going to be two of these, okay, we take one of the areas and we just double it. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by 0 0.0035. If you work that out, you obviously get 0 0.007, alright? So I hope that's given you some idea then how to tackle that problem.